want you to imagine that you're trying to take notes on today's presentation using a little post-it note. How much are you going to get written on any one post-it note? Not a whole heck of a lot before you have to peel it off and then write on the next one. Peel it off, write on the next one, peel it off. Each little piece of, each little post-it note is only going to contain a little fragment of the talk, a little piece, a little bit of notes about today's presentation. So imagine you're trying to take notes on today's presentation with some blue and some pink. So you've got two different colors, so they're not color-coded, you're not getting any help that way. Some of your notes are in little tiny blue notes, some of them are in little tiny pink notes. And again, not a whole lot written down on either one of the post-it notes before you have to tear it off and write on a new one. Now what if when you checked in, you got this size post-it note? This is the sort of standard size post-it note. Um, this is orange, but it's often yellow. You know, so the standard post-it note, if you got this size and you were trying to take notes on today's presentation, you could actually get a, a decent chunk, a decent chunk of information on one post-it note before you have to peel it off and then go to the next one to take more notes and so on and so forth. But what if, when you checked in, you got this? Yes, this is the holy grail of post-it notes. <laughs> yes. This is the line tablet, for those of you in the back of the room who can't see it clearly, this is the line tablet post-it note. This is the post-it note that no office, no nonprofit organization, no organization buys for its employees. Right? <laughs> I had to buy this for this presentation. MSU, Michigan State University, would not supply this to me. I had to go buy it. I'm like, it's for training purposes. No, we don't buy those. <laughs> but if you had this size post-it note, and you're trying to take notes on today's presentation, how much could you get on this before you had to peel it off and start writing on the next one? A good chunk of information. Coincidentally, our colleagues in law enforcement, this is probably pretty close to the size that you guys actually truly use in the practice to write down notes when you're taking reports and things like that. Why? Because you can get a lot written down on this size. Okay? So imagine that you're taking notes today actually with all of these. This total gamish. Some on little tiny blue post-it notes, some on orange, some on green. All different shapes, colors, sizes. It's not neatly organized. So you're going to get a few words on one post-it note, a longer stretch on a bigger post-it note, and so on and so on. So at the end of today's presentation, you would have a pile of post-it notes, a completely discombobulated pile of post-it notes of all different colors, shapes, and sizes. Now I want you to imagine you taking this pile of post-it notes that have all your notes on today's presentation, and you're going to take them to the world's messiest desk. Maybe it is your desk. Maybe it's your friend's desk. Whatever. Take this precious pile of post-it notes, and I want you to scatter them all over that desk. I want you to put some on top, I want you to bury some under piles and piles and piles of stuff. I want you to put some in a folder that says the neurobiology of trauma, and I want you to put some in a folder that says vacation policy, <laughs> because there's no rhyme or reason to how a traumatic memory is stored, okay? It goes everywhere, it's totally, totally scattered, okay? So all the post-it notes on today's presentation are totally scattered <coughs> across this desk, and now you go back to your regular life. So for law enforcement, they go back to what they need to do. Advocates, you're all going about your business. And I want you to imagine that 36 hours from now, I come back. Okay? Get my little car, go across the border. Why are you coming to Canada? Oh, a little demonstration. <laughs> Why are you here? Because I'm going to find you, and I'm going to say to you, what did I say? Tell me what I said. And we're going to go to that desk, proverbially speaking, and I'm going to stand behind you. And I'm going to say, what did I say? Tell me what I said in my presentation. Well, what are you going to do? Well, first of all, you're going to be like, lady, why are you here? <laughs> and then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to wing it, right? You're going to sort of start at the beginning. Well, there's like, you know, old brain, new brain, and, you know, there's the emotional pieces. And the, you're going to do the best you can to recall as best you can. But what if as you're starting to try to recall and tell me what I said in this presentation, I start interrupting you? And I started asking you very specific questions. So as you're trying to describe the HPA axis, I say to you, is it the hypothalamus or the hippocampus? They both start with H. Do you know? Are you sure? Are you sure which one did? Oh, you're not sure. But you were there. How can you not be sure? You were there. And how are you going to feel about me if I continue to do this? You're going to get more and more irritated with me and say, you know what, you can just go back across the border, lady. We really don't need you here. What if I keep doing it? What if I keep speeding up my questions? 
And every time you start telling me something, I start asking you more and more questions. So you find a little tiny post-it note that has one word written on it, encoding. And then I start peppering you with more and more and more and more questions about encoding. You're like, I don't know, lady, hang on, give me a minute. I, I know I have more notes about encoding, just give me a minute to find it. And you're like searching through the desk. You're looking for the post-it note with the longer explanation of encoding. And I keep asking for more and more details about encoding, and you're like, I don't have it, just give me a minute. You're going to get more and more irritated with me. And the more and more I give you nonverbal cues that I don't believe you, the more and more frustrated and hurt you're going to be. And around and around and around it goes. And this is how victims are interviewed about sexual assault. Law enforcement, yes. Prosecutors, yes. I've seen it happen in other disciplines, too. Nursing, prior to the advent of sexual assault nurse examiner programs, often would interview also in a very, I need to know this detail, tell me more details, tell me more details. Is there a worse way we can interview victims, given what we now know about how memory works? Because they're standing at the world's messiest desk. They're trying to find the post-it notes. They're trying to put the post-it notes in order. We keep asking them for more and more details when all they've been able to find is this, and there's not a lot of detail, and they don't have everything, and they're trying to find the post-it note that's got the details, but they can't find it because it's not stored together. It's scattered all throughout their memory. They are trying to find the post-it notes. They're trying to put them in order. They're trying to answer the questions from the collective we, and they often can't do it. And they may not have all the details we want because they found this post-it note when all the details are on the other post-it note. And the more that we rattle them when we're asking these questions, the less likely it is that they're going to be motivated to keep looking, and the less likely it is they're going to trust us to tell us the information once they do find it, and the more likely it is they're going to say, I'm good, never mind, I'm out of here.